Hi everyone, welcome back into the classroom. Getting my paper towel here. We're going to uh, paint. I had a, a, a question, an email question, about how do I go about designing a floral composition and uh, can I paint some open roses? Because it's been quite a while since I painted some open roses. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to slow down just a little bit, do it more at a beginner pace, and talk to you about my thought processes and my color as I get going. Okay? All right. Let's get into it. So here I have a board. This is my regular MDF you could use. You could use a canvas board. And a lot of people ask me, can I use a canvas board? Yeah, you can use a canvas board. But if you're going to do a lot of fine details like are on these Calypso roses and stuff like here into the centers, you fight the weave of the canvas. So you should fill up the weave of the canvas. I don't like to use, I like a smooth board. So this is a, a an MDF board. Um, and then I gave it just a coat. And I made this color here from... Uh, basically some green, some burnt sienna, a little yellow, and some white. And it's a, it's a beautiful kind of a gray color, and I really like to use it. This is uh, 11 inches this way, 14 inches this way. And so I'm going to paint some Calypso open roses here. And usually what I tell everybody is form the form of your composition really has to match the form or the shape of your, uh, of your painting, okay? So I'll do just a little sketching here. I normally don't do this, but... Uh, so here, basically, if you if you want you want to leave a little bit of negative space out here to the edges, and so you want your composition to basically take in this area that's right out through here. So it will you know you don't want a horizontal composition across a, a design that's more vertical. So here it's more vertical more than anything else. So I want my my composition basically to fit inside of that area, and I want to do a big. Uh, not a big, but I want to maybe do one of the opened up. And these are Calypso roses. They're opened up. They're mostly spent. They're, you know, mostly done. And maybe you do one here. Now, see, so I put one up into this angle, and I put one down into this angle. I have a small little bit right here, which would leave me maybe room for a small bud or something, or another flower, or maybe a set of leaves out there. I have a larger space down here. I like to bring in some some stems down through here and maybe you know maybe we could cross another one coming down maybe a, about like that at that some kind of angle like that but so my form my composition form here will match my composition to the outside that is not some, a rule that you use all the time it's a rule though that I like to use when I start my composition and then I'll let myself kind of go from there but then I know that uh, my design is kind of matching what's happening on the board my colors that I'm going to use out here, this is my Dave Fit Dave's favorite palette. All the colors are listed below in the video description. Everything I use, this is uh, open medium here. I have a little cap of the extender medium that I tell you guys about, which slows down the drying time. I use extender when I want the colors to be a little thinner and slow drying, and the open medium when I want them to be a little thicker and slow drying, okay? And so these are the colors that I have out. We're going to be starting some uh, lecture series on tonal qualities of color. And I'll be using this palette here. So watch in the next few days for our first lessons on tonal colors coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So one of the things that I, I next go into is my colors, okay? So now I so I have this kind of grayish background. I could use any kind of color. The Calypso roses have these kind of yellowish. It's kind of hard. It's off camera there. But kind of yellowish when they span. There's warm, light pink and yellow center so I think of that sometimes when I got here the pinks that are on here are very very cool color I could turn around and warm some of them up these others down over here are warmer but um, you know it is uh, it, it, it's kind of up to you now this is a this photo I'm not going to use it at all they just put it out here these are Adobe stock photos and you can go use those you purchase those, and uh, I have lots and lots of them out there. But uh, uh, those are all free for you to, not free, but once you purchase them, you can use them for all your paintings and stuff with no purchase, no problem whatsoever. 
So anyway, so I'm, I'm thinking about the colors. What colors do I want? So maybe I want some of my Calypso Rose color to go into the background. Maybe I want to do something a little different on this one and pull some of the soft yellows from that background. And that might be, that might be something, like soft yellows and soft, soft greens for leaves and stuff like that. So I'll start to think about that. Now soft, what does soft mean? The tonal quality. This is yellow oxide. And it will be, if I come up here and put that on there, it'll be a brighter kind of a yellow in there. And do I want it that bright? If I don't, then I take it down with some of the gray that I used in making my background here, my background gray. So I'll just mix up a little bit of that, that kind of a, a grayish color. And it just has to be, it just has to be close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because then you use this gray tone to help soften your color. So see, it's very, very close to what I have there already. And you use that inside of this to soften that color. And so now that, see that yellow is a softer yellow in there th than that one. It's also just a touch lighter because I added the white. But I can use variations of that. It might be kind of nice. So I'll take a little bit of that yellow. I'll take a little bit of this green. This is my two inch uh, Warner paint scraper. Now you've seen me use this on landscapes and stuff all the time. I I love paint scraper backgrounds, and so I'm going to do a paint scraper background on this one to kind of kind of begin. And they give such different, such lovely, lovely play of color into the background, and uh, I just love some of the variation you can get. Now you can soften it out. Take some of your gray color here. You could take, and what I do is take my paper towel with a little bit of water into it, and I'll pull through here and, you know, set some them some differences. I like a few horizontals and a few verticals into the colors when I set those in. And uh, I might leave just a few areas of heavier color. I also like to do this with a, a brush and also with some smaller palette knives as well. My smaller little uh, uh, Liquitex number no. five palette knife. I like that. You know, you can get some. I like this kind of stuff that happens into the background. And so sometimes I'll work a couple of times to get some of those marks on there that I really like inside the painting. And so, you know, I here I have, I envisioning that rose here. So working too long in here is not because it's going to cover up. And I vision the other one coming down here. So I really want, if I'm going to add some interest, I really want it right through that area right in there. That would be kind of nice. And maybe softly pull some of this down. A little bit of water here. Softly pull some of this down. Soften out any of the edges that you think might be just a little bit too harsh for your for your painting And you can set up some movement here see and so I'll be looking at that but this yellow I will in turn use some of this yellow inside the roses which will give it a, Hopefully a pretty nice look. I love creating like this and trying these different things sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it works really really well so you know you try and everybody's different and I'm a paint to sell artist and everybody likes different things so I might be doing some more uh, in-depth things in there a little bit later on now for my brushes these are the fusion flat this is a fusion flat eight and I'm also going to be using a six filbert out here the the um, uh, Calypso roses have kind of these rounding rose petals out here and so I want to capture a little bit of that and uh, that I love to paint the rounded edge with the filbert because I you've seen me before roll over up onto the edge of the filbert and draw with it so I take the filbert I roll over and draw and I like to do that okay so let's just get some color in here first. And I might warm these up a little bit, play to warm and cool. So when you're gonna play to warm and cool, the, this red that you have here is very warm. This uh, quinacridone over here is very cool. So you have a warm and a cool. And if you're not sure, you just kind of start out with both. And I just wanna capture the essence of the, uh, 
the Calypso roses, I'm not going to sit there and copy them absolutely perfect, even though this color is going to be very, very close to what you see on that rose. I don't need to worry about copying those colors perfectly because I'm painting, I'm painting my own composition here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and lightly push in the idea of those colors. Now I'm going to thin this out. So, and I want it to start it thin so I don't leave any textures or anything onto the surface that will affect what I'm going to do later on. So if I come in here and I, and if I get any kind of textures in here, they, that will disrupt my brush movement, my marks that I'm going to use later on into the painting. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to pull these out a bit. I'm not going to draw the petals too much. I'm just going to set what I think or the size area of this rose. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to sit kind of at that angle. I'll thin this out a bit. Let's grab this one, which is going to be more directly towards us. So it'll be more of a round circle. And see, I'm not I'm not doing the edges out here perfect. I want to blur. This is what I call blur the edges. Blur them into the background right now so that I don't create any, any, because this, I'm not, I'm not uh, drawing perfect the Calypso Rose yet. I'm just putting on some color and giving myself the idea of where those roses are going to be. Drop down. Maybe we'll leave that little mark right in here and we'll turn one coming down here to this side. Leave that and pull one down. Not, not quite as big, so all of the weight of my composition will stay up here. So usually if I'm dragging down, if I make this a bigger one down here than any of these up here, your eye will pull down, and I don't want to do that. I want your eye to gently come down here. So I, do, I want to keep the largest, most predominant one of the roses up here, and it's probably... This will probably be, I always say you create a large rose and that is the one you decorate the most and she's the queen of the composition. She controls the composition. And I think it'll be this one here because I want your eye to be lifting up here like this. All right. So what I'm going to do inside the body, the Eclipse Rose has a lot of light and really it's a light yellow. And so I'm going to take some white, a little bit of yellow oxide, not the Hansa yet. We will use the Hansa, but not yet. I sneak up on the, the painting of the roses. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to deposit, pulling in and out here, some of this light. And don't worry about a blended edge out here. There's a little extender here, so this pink is still wet, see? But I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the marks going in and out. Here, and I'm going to set up this nice light, this glowy light that you're going to see within the flower. Maybe a little more white and set up here. No texture yet. So if you get a mark and it has some texture in it, just come through it again and get rid of it. Just set in some light. And let's just... So sometimes I come in through here, and if I want it to be a little softer, I create a halftone. Now, what is a halftone? Those of you who haven't studied color theory, you should study color theory. And uh, I have a full course online for that color theory. A halftone is halfway between here and here. So here's my center. Here's this one here. I'm going to reach over, grab a little extender, take some of this, take some of this. I'm going to create a color, value-wise, and value -wise, light and dark, that's going to be right between the two, and I'm going to soften the expression of those pinks coming out here between those two colors, the half tone. Let's go over for right now, and let's just set some of this color right in here. Maybe not quite as light, and we'll come up here with a little half tone as well. Soften that out. And this is where I like to blur those colors together with my finger as well sometimes. But you can see right now, generally because I used a little more white there, your eye is generally tracking right up here to this one, right? All right. Now, one of the things I like to do, the next step that I like to do is I like to answer, well, let's go, first let's go put just a bit of that color. We'll soften it out a little bit more, some of that white but let's also grab a little bit of this softer gray or background. And so this color that we're going to work down here has got to be a little softer, a little softer yet than that. So we'll gray that just a bit. 
And this is what we call, and we're going to be talking a lot about this when we start talking about some of our color theory questions. This is what we call the tone of the color. So I want this rose down here to be softer. I want your eye to come here, here, here. And if your eye doesn't go up there enough, reach back up there. Grab a little bit more white, maybe a touch more yellow into that. Get yourself a nice light color and make sure you're depositing that right into that center there pulling some of those marks out here in and out these the rows the petals grow in and out here so move your brush marks in and out there so any of the movement that you you is picking up the movement of the petals all right now I love, and it's hard to see that one that's up there, I love these deep shadow tones that come up underneath some of these roses here. So I'm going to capture some of that. And so I'm just going to pinch wipe my brush here. I'm going to, and shadows I like to do more, trans, more thin, more transparent. So I'm going to use some extender. I'll grab some quinacridone. I don't want it to be too bright. So I'm going to add a little bit of green and a little bit of burnt sienna to it. And you can see, see, it takes away some of the brightness of that color. The brightness would be okay, but I want to take some of it away here. And let's just drop in some heavy shadow right down in here, which would be the lower part of the, of the uh, rose. And I'm just going to drop it in like that. And as a matter of fact, if I leave some light petals in here, I don't want, I'll, I'll blur that edge, that line a little bit, but I want to leave that. Now see, that drives your eye there pretty, pretty good. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to drive the viewer's eye right in there, right into this area. We might even put up a nice little touch of some bright color here up onto the light because if light's coming this way the brighter color would be right up here so let's just drop a little bit of that right out there into that area here now i'll just blur out with my finger here you could use a brush you could use your finger and just blur out just a bit some of that other color there let's soften this up just a bit a little bit of pink a little bit of this into this color so the color is not and I'll thin it maybe a bit more and let's put some of that right down in here onto the low side the shadow side maybe a bit just a whisper of it back down here onto this side here okay and you can blur out here like that okay now so I'm setting up some of the colors that you're going to see from the lights and some of those pinks. Let's get some of this real dark that we see out here as well. Um, just a little, just a bit of it. Just, let's take a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of green, maybe a touch of our red violet. Nice dark. The red violet will cool it and really darken it. See that? Becomes a very, very dark tone that we can use right in here. And I want to use it with restraint. I only want it in a few areas here of that real dark center here where I want that viewer's eye to go right in there. I don't want to go drag it out all the way through some of these other things because the painting won't have as much interest or contrast. And while I'm at that with that, maybe a little burnt sienna, a little bit of uh, green here. We'll use the chisel of the brush here. And let's just put in the idea of some stems here, here that are just flowing in this way into these roses. We'll widen this one out right in here a bit, coming into that one, okay? So that gives you an idea of that, you can see how the stems lift off. Now you can wipe them, blur them off a bit. Sometimes I'll come in with some of the roses and I'll add secondary color. Sometimes I add a little chisel mark right here to suggest uh, um, the thorns. You know, I do, I don't always do it, but sometimes I do just to suggest thorns and stuff on them. 
And that's just a little burnt sienna and a quick little chisel. You put it on and you get out. Don't go in there and paint the world's perfect thorn because you're going to go in and paint the world's perfect calypso rose. Okay? All right. Okay. So we'll continue on here. Now what I'm going to do is take some of my yellows. And I, I have the three yellows, the Hansi yellow, Darulite yellow, yellow oxide. And whenever I paint a rose that has a real yellowed center, I like to kind of model these colors up. And I'll start to touch them through the center. And you'll get all kinds of variations here of the colors. Let's just lightly, light with light brush pressure, add a little bit here. So you can see, because of the white that I have in here, the white underpainting will make everything I do on top of it brighter. So I use the same color, but you can see what happens. Because I painted the underpainting of these roses with a tonal quality to them that is becoming more like the background, that yellow dissipates down. So wherever you put a lot of white, it's that white, it, when you come over it with another color, that white's gonna make that other color reflect up and through and give you a lot of contrast. All right, let's come back out and let's start painting some of the rows. I love, <coughs> excuse me, I love some of these uh, detail petals that are out like this. And I wanna kind of capture that on uh, some of the painting. Now, I'm working on a light background, they're working on a darker background back there, but uh, that won't make too much a difference. But we're gonna, I'm gonna use my filbert this time. Go to a little bit of extender. I'm gonna work on that queen, the big one. A little bit of the quinacridone, and maybe a touch of the red violet, maybe just a touch of this grayer color. Let's come out here and you know, we'll kind of sketch and draw the roundness of a petal, of one of the petals that are out here like this. And I'm going to leave some of that center color in there for right now. Because see, that center color is anchoring it to the background. And sometimes that's all that and that rose needs is a simple little line like that. Just simple little marks to, uh, to draw it. Sometimes I do more. Sometimes I'll do less. Let's drop one right out through here. Okay, we'll draw that one out. Okay, and make the, these, the, the farthest open petals here are the most mature petals onto the rose. So they are technically the largest of them. I'm gonna lighten this up a bit, add a little more extender. And I use the filbert because I love to, I've always drawn with my filberts. I love to roll over onto the edge of the filbert and draw a petal in that way. And so I wanna give these petals a bit of a, a, a rounding motion to each one of these petals. Now, that one uh, is a bit soft, so I'm gonna roll over here to a, a bit, a touch of dark and just roll over that edge, maybe a touch more dark, just roll over your brush onto that edge and just draw that edge here and uh, pull in a bit. Don't cover up all that background color. Let some of it show through because it, it kind of anchors that rose right onto the background there, see? So, but see, I draw that edge and that edge makes that rose see, but I don't need to draw everything. The rose doesn't need that. You, you know, you don't need to have everything. Let's go, let's flip over, do a a little bit softer and a light one, a little bit lighter. So let me see what the lighter expression means. So I like to do some light ones out here, especially as the rose gets spent. As the roses get, get older, the colors fugitate out of them and they get lighter. And so I like that, but it's too quick. So I'll just make a half tone petal right in between the two, right in here one that's gonna sit color-wise between the two here. And I like that. And, but maybe I want to design where I see that edge a little bit more. So let's just grab a little bit of a slightly different color, maybe a bit of the green into that. And let's thin that out. I haven't added any textures yet. And let's just lightly draw that edge over. Now that might be a, so when I put that on and it might be a bit too dark, I'll just go ahead and pinch wipe my brush, pick up some light color and come right back into right next to that edge and start painting it out until I get the edge of that petal the way I want. 
and I'll take out some of that color, let some of that sit in there like that. That's, that's kind of pretty. Now we could use these edges like this also to give the little ruffly edges that you will see on some of them as well. And so you can add a little ruffled color. I'm going to add a little ruffled pink out here. Just a bit of that in there. It's just pretty, it just kind of breaks that up a bit. Let's go back, right back down over here and uh, maybe bring this right back into some, maybe extend it out because some of the petals look like they're a little heart. Do you see that? And so you want to capture that effect on some of them here. Let's just pull out. See how I pull out? lifting off some of that color and it makes it look like that petal just goes right into the light see and i'll leave just that little dark edge that's why i like working with the filbert like this is because i can leave that edge really easy let's go a little darker there so we'll add a little more uh, red violet here to that that might be too dark but let's just give it a go it's coming out of that shadow so and we'll draw this edge of it. Maybe let those come around like that. Now, lift back off. Take off some of it. Pull right out towards that your drawing of it. And we'll leave that. And that's not so bad there. Nice big one like that. That's not quite so bad. There, I kind of like that. So I have that light. Now, um, I'm going to rinse that dark out of my brush here for a second. When you rinse your brush and you're doing it like this, make sure you spoke, poke it back into a little bit of extender. That helps reduce the water because this area is, is not dry. It's still wet. But if I come in there with water, I'll lift a hole in it. So I want to put extender back into my brush, and that won't happen, okay? Um, and if I'm going to work into that, sometimes I'll take maybe a little yellow oxide thin here with some extender and I'll push this yellow out into the rose. It's also going to give me a, a bit of a warmer area and a, a, an area that I can, let's just work on our light center again. To I like the model. That's where the interest. So this is what I call modeled, where some of those colors are working together here they're not you don't see specific marks you just see the colors working there and i want a little yellow and pink together right out here some of that color coming out of that center remember this rose is almost done almost spent it's got to you know it doesn't have too much life left in it and so we'll come back in with some of this light and we're going to work this light down into that center and pull out, out into that petal that we have right out there. So this will come around this way here. So and it's much easier. See how I get that little modeling in there? It's much easier when you get that, when you leave this wet in here. Now, a lot of people always write, well, my acrylics dry too fast. And I'm going to give you this warning right now. Not all acrylics are the same. I've been a paint chemist for over 40 years, and I, I've made all different kinds of acrylics. Some acrylics are made to dry hard really fast. Some, like this one, are made to dry very slow and stay soft so I can manipulate them for several hours. It all depends. Acrylics are made different. No two acrylics are the same. And, you know, it's, so your acrylic, you may be using an acrylic that's designed to dry fast. And you won't be able to do that with these types of techniques with that acrylic. That's just a fact. Okay, so I have some of that light. I want to, so if light's coming down through here, light would reflect right back down in here quite a bit more. So I'm going to work this light a bit more heavy and reach up and grab some, maybe some Hansa and some Darya light, some of my other lighter, brighter ones, and hit that area in here as well. And you can see I just get a little more light reflection up into there, and I like that. Okay, I like it, I like it. Let's take some of that light. Now, I've painted mostly with extender. At now is the time when you can start adding a little open medium. What's the difference? Open medium has more power and so you'll see the color a little bit more 
and power meaning that it leaves the color a little thicker. So you'll see that color a little bit more as you're putting it on and stuff. And so, um, you know, that's a personal choice what you want in your, in your, uh, that particular petal. Now a little light pink, maybe a secondary petal right here. Right as it comes up there, it gives the idea of a secondary petal. Let's just, because you can come into here now with a little light edge too, because the light edge of a petal will start to show up. So maybe you want to put a few lighter edged petals in here. That's up to you and yours. Here, how you want to, uh, to draw. You might like right here, this is why I really like, I'll take this light and I'll push it onto the corner of the of the chisel and this is one reason why I love to draw with this one so maybe I'll draw a petal that pulls right down here like this right down into that that angle right there now so I have this lovely edge on there and I've got to push this edge right in here now I don't want to lose all my yellow sometimes I will just take my finger and pull that in like this, leaving, coming up as close as I can to that edge, leaving it and pulling in like that to get the movement of that petal in. And sometimes that's just enough. Sometimes I'll use my brush and restate some of the colors back in there. Which one is it? It's whatever you want to do. That's, that's up to you. You know, so now on one of them that I look at, you see as you get some of these bouncing around lights, you get some darks and stuff that can come back up up here and to the front. So let's try that. May or may not work. We don't know. Let's come back. Let's warm this. Let's gray it with a little bit of our green burnt sienna. We'll take some quinacridone and some red. And let's just see about maybe a little more pink into that. It went and looked maybe just a bit more pink into that. Okay, let's just see about a maybe a pinker petal coming up here into the front here, which would be a shadow of it because the light's hitting on the inside of the flower. And we'll just let that one come up like that. That's, yeah, that's not too bad. That kind of works. And um, then we can take slight, not quite as light as this other one here, but maybe down just a bit and and push this one in just like that that's kind of pretty that one sits in there a little different here and uh, I want to draw this one wider right down into there let those two just sit there like that maybe a softer pink and this is the whole thing I'm just thinking. I called this, there were several lectures I did in my online classes I called weaving the petals. And this is what I, I, I always call it. I'm weaving the petals together here between light and dark and visualizing what it is that I want to do with that, how I want that flower to sit. Now, what I also like to do though is give a commonality or flow to the colors. So there's a real quick light dark right here that I do want to soften just a bit. So a little more light right out here onto this petal. And what that does is see how that starts to soften the exchange of the light darks there as it's coming up that way. So I'll, I'll watch as I'm not only weaving the petals, I'm watching my values, the lightness and darkness of these, and maybe adding just a touch more light here and there to soften some of the expressions that I have there to the outside. And that works pretty good. That That's kind of a nice little look to that. We could develop them even more out here. We could even develop, since this is the light side, maybe even more of a light petal that comes out this way here. Comes out maybe that little heart shape there. Push that in here. Just a little bit there. That just gives you another row of those petals. Maybe a touch of that light right here coming out from underneath that one. So that there like that so that shadowy petals turned up there we might want to put and again it's just for you know the harmony of it 
maybe a touch of this light coming up like this towards that top because it's coming out of the light center. You got to imagine the light center and here. So that petal's coming out of the light center area there where the light is. And so, and this is the oldest part of the rose out here. And so it's, it's starting to fade away as well. Good. So that gets that one kind of there. Do I want to have, you know, my daughter, Jessica, who is like the master of contrast. She likes lots of contrast. She'd say, dad, pump that up with a little bit more, put a little more white in there, maybe a little more white and yellow. Just go for it. Cause you could always wipe it off. <laughs> Just go for it. She's very brave with her brush. So we'll just pump this up a bit more. But remember, if you get it too much, you got to walk it through your painting as well. So, and that's a choice that you're going to be making. Now, also, now all of these, you know, normally in a rose, and I tell you in a rose all the time that, you know, the, the more juvenile petals are into the bowl, the smaller, younger, immature petals are in that center. But this is an open rose. This rose is completely opened up. It's pretty much it's near the end of its cycle, its life cycle. So all the petals are pretty much large, and that's why I love painting them as well. And so, you know, do you put that much in there? Well, you know, smaller ones in there, not necessarily because the rose wouldn't have them. I'm just going to add a bit more light right in there, just as a little streak, maybe, and even use a little open medium here. Carry that out a bit more since I did that. And that works pretty well. Now, I love the uh, uh, darker when in the older, and this one has just a little bit of the light dark, but usually when they get really spent, they get really dark centers stuff. The, the septals and the, excuse me, not septals, but the stamen up in there get really dark. So I like to use those out and around when I'm putting on some of these roses that are more spent, that are uh, older. And I love that dark. And let's get a little bit of the burnt sienna and the green here. And let's just tap a few. And that's really going to keep that contrast in there. There, like you, like you have there. And then I'll rinse that brush out and pinch wipe that water out of there. Get that water out of there. Put a little bit of extender back in there. Okay, and let's just take a little Hansa and a little white. Don't mix it up real well. Just tap it a couple times on your palette here. And let's just add a couple of light hits up and through here as well. Just softly push that in right there. Yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe a, a touch. Sometimes I'll take even like the quinacridone and a little burnt sienna, thin that just a touch, and put little marks of that coming into the center. Well, you'll pick up some of those other colors that you're seeing otherwise in the composition. And that's just kind of nice. So I start to, my centers, I really start, I like the centers, because it's a center of interest. I like the centers to carry, really, quite a bit of movement, marks, colors around, you know, and, and uh, they have some of those colors. So there, that's, that's not so bad there. Let's go back over to this other one, softer, grayer, maybe a little open medium. You can use open medium and extender together here. We'll push a soft light. Let's push just a touch more pinky light in there. Okay. And these rows, these that are out here, I'm going to do even softer yet. And uh, maybe, uh, you know, even a little bit more grayer here. But let's just, let's, let's gray it down. We gray it down with some of our burnt sienna and our green. That makes this gray, right? And then we can use that to soften down some of our pink color. And let's just come out here and draw. Let this, let's get that double edged petal that we see there. And then I'll push this in and out of that light color like that. Right up to the edge. We'll leave that dark edge. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that real dark edge there. Even though it's real close to that one. 
you know, you can take your finger and blur it slightly like this if it bothers you or if it's too much. And that just takes off a little bit. Your fingers are great tools. <laughs> They're really great tools. Let's lighten that up, soften it up. Maybe warmer pink it up a bit. A little softer here. Let's draw some. That's not quite dark enough. And so let's just grab just a bit of this color with that. That's better. Pull some of this petal in. Pull it in and out here. And I don't have enough that is not wet enough right in there. So I'm going to take some uh, yellow oxide, some of my extender, a little bit of white, maybe even a little bit of pink. I need to give myself something to push around here. Does that make sense? So I'll push that in and out wasn't wet enough in there to get that pushing movement of the flower, see? So I'll do that. Let's drop down. Thin color. So I, as I move out of my center, I, I do move away from the uh, uh, using the, the uh, uh, open medium and back into the extender that is a little thinner because I want the painting to be a little thinner out here in some of these other areas here. Okay, so here, now you can also, you know, you can also uh, put some of these back in with light. Let me show you, there's all different kinds of ways you draw it. And as you watch the videos through the channel, I'll show you all different kinds of ways because I don't limit myself just by one way. So I'll take a little thin color, a little darker color here, and you can do what we call negative painting as well. Negative painting is, I have, I'll visualize that paddle, petal right in there and instead of painting the petal itself I paint the background around the petal which will make it look like there's a petal see so this is a negative painting technique so I can say oh okay I'm going to visualize a petal right here and so I paint the shadow underneath the petal leaving the petal so in some big compositions I'll do both a negative painting and a positive. So here's a negative painting and here's the positive painting of it, what I call the positive painting of it. Painting the petal, and this one is I'm painting the background around the petal, keeping the flower a little softer, a little different there. See, and, and it does make it quite a bit different. Let's put a slightly lighter one, maybe right in here, right up in here. Now this one we were going to make towards us a little bit, so it's going to be a little, I have to have a little more openness to it. But you can put on some negative and then come back and hit some positive too here, putting on that petal edge. It's a wonderful back and forth, and that's what's going to, and utilizing some of these different techniques is going to make your flowers look completely different. Like I'm right up in here. Um, do I want to try to find a light value between there and there, or... Do I want to drop down just a little bit darker and use a shadow to come in here and say there's another petal right there. So I paint the shadow behind it rather than the petal in front of it. It's a different way and it works and it's, and it's really nice. So sometimes when you get yourself as an artist in a jam and you're not sure, oh, you know, how am I going to get out of that? then you can use that negative painting. A lot of times artists will use too much white. Their flowers, has that happened to you? <laughs> it used to happen to me all the time. It's a, it's a natural thing to happen. You keep pounding in white and your whole flower becomes flat and white. The way to get out of that is to switch over to a negative painting technique and start painting the background around those white petals. Start painting, don't paint the petals, paint the shadows. And that's how you get out of it. And it does work. So let's paint some shadows right down through here. We'll let some of this just fade off down through here. Maybe a uh, just a touch more light or so rounding petal up here. And just an idea of it. One coming out a bit here. That's kind of neat. Yeah. I need to uh, open this angle up on this one, that negative painting. So I'll put a little positive edge here and open that 
pulling in that way just a bit more that will turn that pedal now let's go back in let's you now we'll keep the what's going on in here with the sept i mean with the uh, uh stamen and stuff a little softer so we'll go a little burnt sienna some yellow first into some burnt sienna maybe not some of that real dark color We'll just keep this a little bit softer play because I want everybody to come up to this one a bit more. And a touch of light and yellow here, some of that. Um, let's get a tiny touch of light more right out here. Pull that out. That kind of leads, uh, one reason why I'm doing that is it kind of leads your eye up into here. That's what I'm looking for. So I know that light, those light marks will do that. Lead you up there just a touch more. And uh, that works. Maybe a bit more shadow, some little bit of shadow pulling in here. I don't want to get wrapped up into it like I did that. So you can see this one has more detail right up in here. This one overall is a softer expression. I can start some of the, I can bring up so I can take a little bit of light on the edge at here. And I can, as I start to add the detail to the petal of the petal edges, this flower will take on more interest. And so that's up to me to, de to decide. So, you know, sometimes I just drag through a bit, break the edge, so it doesn't have, so you see it, but it doesn't have as much of an interest. Let's just put a slightly lighter little pink. Maybe a little, see how I roll over on that edge and I use it to just draw in that, uh, maybe a idea of another petal right there, see? Which will give, so if it starts to look too flat, just give it another petal in there to pump up the fullness of the rose a bit. Let's just turn this one with some of that light just a bit more. And I think that's all I'm gonna really do on it. I'm gonna keep this one really simple. Might put a slightly darker, so I'll go to my darker colors. Slightly darker touches right back down there and leave that dark. Then we're gonna come back very simplistic here. So I'm gonna touch a bit of the, a little bit of open medium and some extender. I like to mix the two. Let's keep this more toned. So we'll make our gray color here, okay? And a little bit of light into that. So we'll make a gray, which will soften this out. Keep this just a bit more toned and we'll put on a soft, just a very soft, whispery, kind of a cloudy almost color here. We'll pull in a few light petals and very, very understated to the flower. A lot of people, I always call these the ghost. I paint just the ghost of a flower. And a lot, and a lot of people write me, I like your ghost flower the best. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. It's, you know, I like your ghost flower the best, the one I didn't paint very much, you know. But the, the ghost flowers add a lot. So let's just take it, and we gotta gray that, remember? Gotta gray that, Dave. Let's soften that out, gray that out. See how much softer that is than right out there. And I can really, you know, pop up that one up there even more by adding some more light in there. And now that it's dried down, I just might do that, okay? I might do that, but we'll keep these, uh, let's just keep some, let's just give some simplistic petals, just some ideas of them, mostly blurred out here of what this, uh, this rose is here. It doesn't need to be very much. You can basically just paint almost just a blurry little blob here, and that will that will really kind of do it. It doesn't need, because the the main interest is that top rose up there. So we just want to add some movement, some interest, you know, just a, 
Maybe uh, if you have any kind of detail where you're going to draw a petal, maybe do it on this side so the viewer's eye, and I'll draw this, it's going to be too much, I think, but the viewer's eye will definitely come up to this side of the rose. See that? It comes right up into here. Now your eye your attraction is right up in through here. Um, I'm going to soften that just a bit right in here. Put some of that pink right in there. And if I soften it out, maybe that'll, I can leave that, maybe pull through that edge just to soften it just a bit. You know, it's that edge. You got to, you know, do you leave that edge? And uh, I'm going to move this. I've got these too much in line, so I'm going to move this one over just a touch more so that the petals, so two, two angle, two breaks in the petals don't line up with each other. That's another thing. A little thing, but it's an important thing. Don't line up the breaks of those petals. And uh, let's just put a soft shadow, maybe a little bit of negative painting down here. Softer little shadow, maybe an edge or two down here. We don't need very much. A little bit of light here some of my yellow softer yellow oxide down here not the brighter yellows they're going to stay up there a little softer yellow and then my grays are going to get softer yet burnt sienna right into some of this background gray right here so that gray so this these uh stamen colors and stuff uh, all get a little softer everything is a little softer right down there as it's moving away. Now, yeah, that that all works there pretty well. I can, now I have to decide, do I want to see, and this is where I'll really go over to the open medium. I'll use the open medium because I want this to stay wet. I'll use a little bit of my brighter yellows, and I'm going to mix up some of this white and I'm going to paint down into, in and out of some of this area here, which increases the use of the white in there and pulls your eye there more, increases the contrast. My daughter would really like this. Increases that contrast right in that. Now, this will dry down just a touch, too, so it's always good to, you know, let you see just how much it's going to dry down, you know. You know, how much, how much do you leave that? You know, do you take just a touch of that, put some yellow out there? How much do you leave? Do you take a real light, little pink edge right here? Light, light, light. And see how that lifts that petal up even more right there. That, that's adding even more contrast. And that's how you go through and add even more contrast if that's what you want. I can go down to just the tiniest little corner of this and start adding little hits of light. You see me do that in, you know, in, in wildlife, and I learned how to do it in wildlife and flowers and stuff and doing what I call, and, and little landscapes. You see me do it in some of the landscapes now. I call it the sparks. The sp add the sparks of color into it, and you can turn around and do that and really paint that up. You know, so this one is very soft. You could have it if you want to pull your eye down. You can have even more, you know, into that. And how you can get that is just by, uh, just basically adding a little burnt sienna. We'll add a bit more to this center right down there. Or you can keep it overall soft. Now I'm going to go back here. We'll go to this one. Back to my, my. Um, uh, my fusion flat I'm gonna put in some just some soft soft leaves and I like to take some of when if I want my leaves really soft I like to put them right into my grays and my other colors that I have here I add some open medium to this too let's see what this color looks like coming off of here a nice soft gray green which is kind of what I want oval shaped leaves you know and if you wanna um, you know, really paint 
a little bit more specific you can give them a light side a dark side sometimes i'll give you'll see in other things i'll give them all kinds of uh, vein lines and stuff so i can come in here a little burnt sienna a little green and establish a vein line right there like that maybe pull in a little shadow right in there and that gives a little more interest to the leaf that's all up to you to decide how much you want to do sometimes i'll thin the color and you'll see me in other videos use the color very thin when i draw out just very impressionistic leaves which is one of my favorite i don't like to get i like my leaves to be um very whimsical and um you know i love uh the playfulness that you can get to leaves and so a lot of times that's what i will do is i'll get just very playful and not be perfect with my leaves i'll work their shape sometimes i'll just wipe them back and you know let them be extremely impressionistic i like that change the colors up a bit you know change the colors and uh just put some of those colors in and around. You can use that, these some of these leaf colors like this. And even if you want to pop some more interest to this rose here, use some negative painting. So see a little negative painting there. All of a sudden that rose comes more to life. I could use that real dark green, a touch of red violet into that. Super dark and do just a touch of that negative right in there and really pop some of that contrast right out there like that all kinds of ways you can do it um you know but i i don't like to have too much of an open space so i will sometimes just take a a light and just and just push some of that color right that the sparks of some of that color right in there like that just Take the flat of your brush with some of that and just pull some of that through. Break up some of the, what is that? We don't know. It's just sparks of color breaking up the composition there. I think maybe, whoops, thin color. Let's go very thin. Maybe a few soft ones right out here. You know, sometimes I'll put in little marks just a few little soft ones there, ideas. I don't like to like surround the, the flowers with leaves, but I do like to uh, maybe trail them down. Maybe uh, just a little negative painting right here. We'll pop that edge, see, and pull some of that down. Just give some of that playful movement right down there like that. That I like to see so sometimes I, I and I really like it to get a burnt sienna and a green here and a real playful kind of movement down here I just like that color see that color drag I like that and uh, so and hopefully if you're watching the video you like that too so but you can come in and maybe just hit a little bit here like that and see how that each time I hit that with that negative it adds a little more interest to that rose right there so so there you have kind of a, a fun let's put a little negative right in here so watch how that pops this rose way forward let's just do that so that increases that power that line right here so I'll negative paint my green right around that rose giving it a bit more shape here and pull that I, I've just decided I'm going to do that there we go and just pull that that way and so you now you get that powerful open it's kind of fun you, you see and so when I'm thinking about you know when I'm, I'm designing this so here my original thought is to get it to get that shapes get it in there I could put a bud up here but overall this has got a you know a shape here that is kind of fish, fitting the shape of the outside of the board and and I like that and so 
you know, that's, that's where I start and then I'll start building the flowers if I need to. I can add smaller accent flowers or other little things in between, you know, there to shape it all up here. I start to pick out my queen. I build that up. I think about the tone. The tone has got to be here. The tone has got to be brighter here. It's got to be less and less and less, becoming more like the background. So I mix up that gray of that background and I add that to my colors as I move down through my composition so my colors get softer. And then you can come back and add even smaller little little touches or what I call the little sparks of color. And so with the, uh, um, oh here it is, I put it in there. So, you know, like here I have this folded petal. Well, that's not, it, it's, uh, between all of that stuff I have here, I lost a little bit of the look of the fold, so I might come back and just pull a little movement of this, pulling back like that, because that in and out movement is what really draws it. And maybe even a touch, you you know, you saw me spike, spark with light, but you can also out, come right out here onto the shadow side and spark with dark here so that you see the little dark edges that are out there as well. And <clears throat> all of a sudden that petal starts to uh, fold over. And I don't want to get too wrapped up in this, but maybe a, a touch, just give the impressions of some of those petals. That's what I love is the impression of it. That, you know, I used to be such a structured painter I draw everything. I figured it's not gonna be a rose unless I draw every petal and they would just be so stiff. And now I draw as little as possible to say it's a petal. So as, as I'm starting to build it, I'm thinking, is it a petal yet? Is it a petal yet? Is it a petal? As soon as it becomes a petal, starts to look like a petal, I stop. If you keep going, you're going to make it stiff. Has that happened to you? Happened to me for a long time until I learned how to stop painting. And that's the important part, okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to do a few more of these types of things. I'm also going to do those short color theory videos for you guys. We're going to, we're starting that. I start, I filmed some the other day. We're going to start putting those up onto the channel. Uh, those of you that have the opportunity for the next uh, two more weeks or so, we have the gallery sale. You can go over, you can click the link. It's right in the video. If you like to collect one of our paintings, um, you can go over there and you can scroll through some of the paintings, you know, take a look at through some of the paintings. I have flowers and then you'll see landscapes. There's a few uh, uh, wildlife and stuff there. And all of those sales, 100% of those sales goes to support this channel and it goes to support our, our charity foundation of the Jansen Art Foundation where we do charity work and free education. So every one of those sales, when you do that, you help promote free education and the free art. So if you want to collect one of our paintings, we, we uh, would really appreciate that. Okay? All right, guys. Thanks very much. Ask any questions away and I'll get to it. And thank you very much to Joan for asking me about this open rose in the composition. And I'll get to all of those other ones you guys are asking for too as, as well. Okay? All right, guys. You take care and I'll see you in the next one.